You've been lied to about premium gas. For decades, they've sold you on the idea that more expensive fuel means better performance, better cleaning, better everything. But guess what? A lot of people filling up with premium are throwing their money straight into the gas tank and literally lighting it on fire. Every week I see drivers at the fuel pumps pulling up in cars like a Toyota Corolla, a Honda CRV, or even a base model BMW. They're dumping in premium fuel because they think it's helping their engine, but it's really not. Let me ask you something. Why are you paying $1 more per gallon, possibly for nothing? You might be doing this without even realizing it. Many cars on the road today, they don't need a premium fuel, but gas stations won't tell you that. Your dealership's not gonna tell you that. Why? Because oil and gas is a multi-billion dollar industry. In the next 60 seconds, you'll learn how to decode that label in your fuel door or in your owner's manual and stop wasting money at the pump. If you're towing, you're performance tuned, or you drive really hard, you may be the exception to the rule. Let's break down what octane means. No nonsense, just the facts. Stick around, I'm gonna save you hundreds of dollars this year. Let's discuss exactly when to use premium fuel and how to decode what your engine really needs. Guys, the first thing you need to understand about gasoline Premium isn't more powerful. It doesn't have any more energy, but what it does have is a higher resistance to something that we call pre-ignition or is known as knocking. Those are the tiny uncontrolled explosions in your engine that can hurt your engine performance or really even cause internal engine damage. So a regular fuel has an octane rating of 87. Premium fuel is usually like a 91 octane higher. That number is the anti-knock index. That's what we see in the United States on the gas pump, that yellow tag. It's not a performance rating. It's really more just an indication of the volatility of fuel. If your engine isn't designed to need that higher resistance to ignition, like in a turbocharged engine or high compression, high performance engines, then using premium really does nothing. You're not getting more horsepower. You're not getting better fuel mileage and definitely not better cleaning. There are additives in all the fuels that manufacturers make today. But if your engine does require it, then running an 87 octane could cause knocking, pinging, pre-ignition. Your car's computer will try to pull that timing back, retard the timing, and that's gonna mean less power to you, maybe worse throttle response. In some cases, you could get some long-term engine damage. So how do you know? The test is simple. Just check the inside of your fuel door. It may be in there. If it's not there, it's definitely going to be in your owner's manual. Take a look in there in the fuel section, and it'll show you what the required octane rating is. If it says premium required, then you're gonna need premium. If it says recommended, then it's only optional, only helping under maybe heavy load, towing conditions, high heat conditions. If it doesn't say anything, you're really wasting your money. There are some examples when maybe using a lower octane rating is actually better for your car. I can tell you many years ago, I had a I think it was a 1976 Firebird. And if I put premium in that thing, I noticed it was hard to start. It just didn't seem to run as good. Now, that's probably a lot to do with a really low compression ratio on that engine, maybe a worn out engine. And you know that fuel just doesn't want to burn as easy when you have a higher octane. So this will be a good example of maybe not only wasting your money, but actually decreasing the performance of your car because you're trying to use a high octane fuel. Again, I want to stress, it's just not a better fuel in any way other than the fact that your car may require it. It's really important that you guys understand what you're looking at at the fuel pump. You're going to see those yellow tags on the fuel pump with a number on it. It'll say 87, 86, 89, 91, 93. In the United States, that is the anti-knock index. So it's an average of a couple of numbers. There's two ways they determine an octane rating. They'll use the research octane number and the motor octane number. They're both tested two different ways. One is usually under a high load, high stress. One is usually low load, low stress, low RPM. And then they'll take the average of those two. They add them together, divide them by two, and that's how they come up with the anti-knock index. That's what you're seeing on the fuel pump. So I don't want you guys to be confused in your owner's manual. You might see two numbers in there. Uh, the one we're looking for is the anti-knock index. That's the actual rating we'll see here in the US. If you guys are out in Europe, you might need to use the research octane number. That number may be different. It might be much higher. If you're here in the US and you're traveling to Europe and you're putting fuel in the tank and you might see on the inside of the gas door, it tells you to use a 95 octane. Don't freak out. It's probably different than what you're used to seeing here in the US. So it's important that you guys differentiate that depending on your location, your region of the world. 
Now that I think you guys have a really good grip on determining what type of octane rating that your vehicle takes and specifically probably your engine requires, I want to get into a little bit about how do you know if your engine's even knocking. The term knocking can be a little bit of confusing for a lot of people. Typically when I think of a knock as an engine repair person or as a technician, I'm thinking of a loud knocking, main bearing going bad, piston slapping somewhere, and that's just not the case. Uh, typically an engine knock is more of a rattle than a knock. So don't think of it as something that you might hear with a loud, a loud banging going on under the hood. That's really not what it's gonna sound like. It's gonna sound almost like a very tinny light rattling and it's gonna be fairly faint. So if you do hear that knocking, that might be an indication that you've got a problem with your fuel. You may wanna step up your fuel a little bit to the next octane rating. Now, if you're using the recommended octane rating and you're still hearing that, um, there's a chance there's something else going on with your car. A lot of times, some of the older cars, they'll have carbon buildup inside the cylinders, inside the combustion chamber, maybe the top of the cylinder head in the combustion chamber, on the valves. These carbon deposits can create hot spots inside the combustion chamber, inside the cylinder. And those hot spots can pre-ignite the fuel. And that's what knocking is. It's really just pre-ignition. That's the real term for it. Engine knock or knocking is really kind of a, what I would consider a made up term. The term is pre-ignition. And that pre-ignition is when a hot spot in the cylinder on one side and you've got the spark firing at the other side and that fuel mixture is under compression which raises the heat. In addition to that, that hot spot and that heat can combine together to ignite the fuel without the spark. But you've also got the spark going on, maybe in a different part of that combustion chamber. And those two flame fronts are gonna to come together and meet each other. And that's the, the rattling noise that you're getting. It's only supposed to have one flame front moving in a very um, precise direction. And when you have two flame fronts coming together, that's where you're getting that pre-ignition and that pinging or knocking. And I think pinging is probably a better term because that's really more what knocking sounds like engine knocking due to uh, a fuel problem. So I wanted to mention that there's there's certain other causes there. The computers nowadays can pick up the knock. There are sensors in the car called knock sensors. They're designed to pick up on a certain frequency. They're piezoelectric devices that'll register, they'll actually create a voltage and send it to the computer anytime it's picking up a certain frequency that it determines to be that pre-ignition or pinging. And then what the computer will try to do is act on that. It's gonna go ahead and retard the timing a bit take some ignition timing out of it to hopefully well, stop the pinging or at least reduce it to an acceptable level. When the computer does that, uh, it's starting to affect your performance again now. Now you're not getting the maximum performance, not getting the maximum fuel economy. Pre-ignition or knocking can also lead to emissions problems down the road. So it's just really important that if your engine's pinging, you're hearing that little bit of a rattle and you're using the correct fuel, you might want to get it into the service repair center and have somebody take a look at it for you. Let's determine what's going on. It might be simple as performing a carbon clean on the engine. A little decarb sometimes will help remove some of those deposits. Uh, you may have some other malfunctions going on, possibly a sensor that's failing, something along those lines. So really important that you don't leave the engine rattling like that for extended periods of time. Um, it really is it's kind of like somebody taking a hammer to the top of your piston inside your engine and it's not really good for it. So long-term damage can happen. I also wanted to point out here, you know, you can look up some on the internet, the different recommended octane ratings for different types of vehicles. And there's always a few surprising ones on there. You know, I was looking through and I saw like the Ford Raptor V6, super high power. It only requires an 87 octane. It doesn't need anything more than that. And if it doesn't need it, you shouldn't be using it. So um, there's always some surprises in there. Um, a lot of times compression ratio has a lot to do with it, but sometimes it really doesn't. And a lot of these turbocharged engines, you'll see sometimes they drop the compression ratio a little bit uh, because they're forcing the air in the cylinder. They're not naturally aspirated. So just important to know what you're working with and uh, make sure you're checking the, the recommended ratings for your particular car. I hope this information has been useful to you. I hope you've got a better grip on what type of fuel you should be putting in your car. And more importantly, I hope that you're gonna be able to save some money by not wasting it, putting in what you think is a better fuel and it's really not for your car. Thanks for watching along. Go ahead and check the next video we got coming out here. We got lots of great content like this coming at you. And our goal here is really to keep you entertained and educated about your car and hopefully prepare you to do some things on your car yourself that maybe you wouldn't tackle on your own without this type of content. We'll see you in the next video.